Hi, I'm Dr. Jack West, medical oncologist from Swedish Cancer Institute in Seattle, Washington, and I'm also the founder and president of GRACE, Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education. And I'm happy to be here for a post-ASCO 2017 update with two of my colleagues. Uh, with me is Dr. Matt Gubins, who is uh, associate professor in medical oncology, specialist in thoracic oncology at the University of California, San Francisco, and Dr. Jyothi Patel, who is professor and in medical oncology at the University of Chicago in Chicago. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. There was a very provocative presentation that came out of China looking at high-risk patients with an EGFR mutation, a more common about in, in the North America, about 10%, 8 to 10%, and in Asia, about a third of patients almost, uh, more commonly never smokers. But uh, in this subset of patients, they directly compared an EGFR inhibitor, Iresa, or Tufitinib, to standard chemotherapy in patients who have uh, their cancer removed, surgically resected, and had uh, lymph nodes that were positive. So these are patients who have a pretty high risk of the cancer coming back. And in fact, uh, in China, it wasn't routine to do very detailed imaging. So we think a lot of these patients may have been even higher stage and higher risk for recurrence. But the trial was exciting uh, for showing that the time uh, before the cancer came back was much lower in the patients who got IRESA compared to conventional standard chemotherapy. Uh, nevertheless, there were some real limitations in that that I think are going to lead us to not change our practice. Jyothi, uh, what, what did you think of this? So, as you know, um, patients who have lymph node involvement and who have their cancer surgically removed, we recommend chemotherapy to improve survival and to decrease the risk of recurrence. And the problem is that we recommend it for almost all patients, but we've probably really changed the course in maybe um, between 8 and 10% of patients. We don't, we give it indiscriminately. Yeah, so we, we might cure a minority, but we can't tell which are already cured, which we're converting, and which are not going to be cured even with them. Exactly. So this is the bar in which we're looking. So this is the prism through which we interpret it in this study. We're saying we have now a select group of patients who have a particular biomarker. Would it make more sense to treat that with an oral drug that we know is better in the metastatic setting than chemotherapy? So this is bringing, um, so in the study, patients were either randomized, so half the patients got chifitinib or resin, um, half the patients got chemotherapy, and a lot of the patients that got chemotherapy didn't get the chemotherapy, up to 20% of them didn't. Yeah, this is also, I think, a cultural difference where because of the system and needing to self-pay as many Chinese do, having to be in the hospital for it, which we don't routinely do in the U.S., uh, and also, I think, just a cultural disinclination toward post-operative chemotherapy where so many people uh, have a driver mutation, we wouldn't necessarily have the same issues here. Right, right. And so in the study, patients got either or in the time until the cancer... Uh, returned uh, what was followed was followed closely and, and certainly there was a big reduction uh, or there's a significant improvement in patients who received the ERSA. In yeah. terms of the time before the, the cancer came back it was two years. Right? It was two years of treatment of oral daily therapy. The problem, I, although I'd love to embrace it, there are a lot of problems with this study. One is that unfortunately in almost all the patients, the cancer came back, and in both arms, whether they got chemotherapy or in um, in patients who got the oral drug, and that's really not our expectation. That's not what our statistics show. We think that patients who have um, stage two disease have about a fifty percent chance of being cured with surgery alone, and so bringing this uh, data to to our practices and as we advise our patients, I think becomes a little bit problematic. In our ideal world and what we're testing in the United States and the cooperative groups is giving chemotherapy first to patients who are eligible for chemotherapy because many of us still think it's curative. And then randomizing patients to either best supportive care, which is observation, versus getting another oral drug, Tarceva, to see if there's going to be an improvement in the outcome. That effort is slow, it's tough, um, but 
it may be that there's some renewed enthusiasm for that study based on this that maybe we need to delay the time until cancer progression or the cancer returns. Mm -hmm. Matt, here, any other thoughts? Well, just to be very straightforward about it, the gold standard in this kind of study is showing that intervention improves overall survival. And kind of a proxy for that is how many patients did it cure? Part of the fundamental problem in adjuvant therapy, therapy you give after surgery, is you're over-treating some patients, patients who are already cured, you just don't know who they were, but you're also potentially under-treating other patients. And the worry is that if patients are meant to be cured due to two years of a pill therapy, easier than chemo, but two years with the side effects associated, usually tolerable but sometimes serious, is that actually help them in the long run? And especially the concern, I think, in this kind of disease where we know that if a patient eventually progresses where they were treated or elsewhere in their body, we know that if you use the Iressa or the Tarceva at that point, they have a good chance of getting control of their disease then. And so maybe it actually is better to have time off therapy, enjoy life, and then get a very effective therapy when the time comes. And so that's why a lot of us as investigators, as great as it is to see patients having long, longer time not having return of cancer, uh, we're, we're reluctant to embrace it until we know that it actually in the long run, all the therapy a person gets, it cures more people or it really improves overall survival. So I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing a North American answer in the Alchemist trial. And I agree that I think this may inspire some more interest in it among patients and investigators. But I, I'm still reluctant to do it uh, for my patients uh, off-label. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I share your concern that it was actually disheartening that it didn't look like almost anybody was cured. And, and that's after two years of therapy. It just seemed like it delayed the recurrence that was going to happen anyway. As a general concept, when we've done other studies looking at this question, we've also had a much easier time showing we can delay it than clearly eradicate the last cancer cell that may be uh, remaining after surgery. And I don't see a huge benefit to giving people whatever symptoms they will have or side effects they will have. It, the quality of life won't be better than being on nothing and you're talking about potentially years of treatment and certainly the expense associated with that, I think there needs to be a real prize at the 